Margaret Hewson. Everyone in the family called them Ga and Gapa. Back in 1933, Ga and Gapa were married and they had this dream. They wanted to build their own beautiful family summer home on a lake in the mountains. After visiting Lake of the Woods, they fell in love with it. At the same time, the United States Forest Service was allowing residents to build summer homes around the lake. Ga and Gapa took advantage of this opportunity and filled out their application in August 1933. They were immediately approved and granted a special use permit to build on Lot 4, Block N, in the Lake of the Woods summer home site. The hard work began for the next decade to build this summer home, or cabin if you will, from scratch, all while raising three beautiful young daughters, Margaret, Laura, and Darylin. Keep in mind, this was all taking place during World War II. So, this is the story of how this little piece of heaven came to exist. Cabin N4 at Lake of the Woods, Oregon. The important part of the story is how Ga and Gapa met each other by a chance encounter thanks to her broken down automobile. And it conked out in front of my father's store at that time. <laughs> so he gallantly went out to rescue her. Right. And that's how they met. Oh. Because of her little car breaking. Oh, Houston's confectionery. Gapa altered the initial cabin interior design into a more rustic plan. A Butte Falls logger, Ansel Connolly, felled the Douglas fir and incense cedar timber, which frames the cabin. The living room is like a miniature lobby in a rustic hotel. Stair treads leading up to the bedroom above the slabs of logs laid flat on the stringers. The undersides still wear their original bark, while the rough sawn tops show the exposed circular saw blade marks eight decades old. The handrails of the stairways are unpeeled small diameter poles connected to the steps with crisscrossing ropes used as banisters. Mr. Feister, a local stonemason, 
created the massively impressive stone fireplace. In fact, members of the Medford Black Tornado football team rolled the stones down from the mountain that were fashioned into the fireplace. And Laura and I were had to be little, three and four years old, I was five, and she had a fit because mom let those babies out in the boat. Mayo never swam, she never did she anything. Had, she had a fear of them. Oh, she's, oh, it's pretty, well, we had no life jackets. But I I know we were, we had to be swimming. Mom would have seen I mean, yeah. we were fearless. We were built to do all that. But she, no, no she, this was not her thing. But we had another row boat. There's a picture amongst those pictures of it. And a little so short dog, dog, a little tiny short dog. After Hewson's confectionery was sold in Medford in the late 1940s, they hauled the large pine table and benches from the restaurant up to the cabin, along with the two-toned white and lime green classic enameled wood cook stove. As we all know, the wood stove makes the best banana pancakes ever eaten. Over the decades, the cabin has continued to evolve through many updates, repairs, and upgrades. Back in 1955, the rock walls were built at the water's edge, making our future campfires possible. In 1956, electricity was installed throughout the cabin. Say goodbye to kerosene lanterns. In 1967, we replaced the cabin roof with thicker shake shingles. In 1988, it was time to relocate the outhouse. The new maroon and white Marlin ski boat replaced the classic black boat in 1993. The following year, the electrical lines were buried underground to the boathouse. 1996 brought about a new indoor bathroom. In 2008, we built a new outhouse with a septic system. We used to have little tiny window panes here because yeah. he found those somewhere. And then all of a sudden, in, I mean, you just hunt, looked around for stuff. You didn't go down to the hardware store and buy new. Of the more recent projects, building a new 60-foot dock in 2012 was definitely the granddaddy of them all. Thanks to the Roseburg workshop and 18 relatives, it was all assembled on the lake over a long spring weekend. After hauling the Wave Runner from Florida to Oregon in 2016, it has provided countless hours of pure enjoyment for both the young and the old. You know, I have proof that this used to be a uh, lower water lake. Uh -huh. We would, that's our, our family, wow. and we would take our old rowboat uh -huh. and lunch, and we'd go down to Rainbow Creek, down at this end, pull the boat up, and there were little tiny flat rocks, smoothest, and to walk on in the whole world. And we'd have our lunch, uh -huh. and then play, because it was very gradual mm -hmm. going into the water. Although many things about the cabin have changed, many have stayed the same. Family traditions still run deeper than the lake itself. And the glistening summer days are always filled with many of them. Laughter and joy fills the cabin as it brings the entire family together, exactly how Ga and Gapa imagined it to be.
Nothing is more beautiful and serene than sitting on our dock watching the sunrise casting its glow onto the still placid lake in the cool crisp morning with a warm cup of coffee in hand or watching the gorgeous colorful sunset when we boat out onto the lake in the warm summer evenings. My mother got a little shingle about this square mm -hmm. and she would put a candle, a regular oh, okay. candle, and then light the bottom of it and mm -hmm. then it would adhere to this right. little piece of floating wood. And then 4th of July, before the fireworks were to start, she made five, because there were five in wow. our family. So we'd take the little fishing boat out, and you'd light each one, and they just kind of bob up and down, gently, right out. And I don't know if fire people would like this story, but <laughs> I mean, it never went to shore. So the whole time we're watching the fireworks, you'd see these little... Oh, that's Just cool. gently bobbing. And this went out. Then my daughter, Diane, started this because now she has five in her family. Uh -huh. And so it's a tradition. Some of the most memorable times were spent around the evening campfire telling stories while roasting perfectly golden brown marshmallows as the moon rose over the mountains. We'd talk and laugh about the day's activities and make plans for the next day. Who's going water skiing around the lake? Or brave enough to go in or tubing? Or quietly canoeing up Rainbow Creek? Jet skiing to the resort maybe? Kayaking or paddle boarding past the docks? Floating in the marlin while sipping on margaritas? Hiking up to the puzzle bark tree? Or simply soaking up the sun on the dock after swimming underneath it, of course. memories always of growing up was watching the moon come up oh, yeah. and my father who yeah. was just this really beautiful sweet kind unteasing type of personality loving yeah. father would always say to new people that came up well the reason we got this lot right here you know is the path of the moon always comes directly to our uh, cabin <laughs> oh, oh, oh how nice <laughs> As the campfire died down, we'd lie on the dock, stargazing and watching the shooting stars from the meteor showers. It's so peaceful and quiet. The only sound heard was a gentle, rhythmic lapping of water hitting against the dock pilings and the rocks at the shore. As we watched patiently and silently, 
a shooting star punctuated the sky with a silver dash and then vanished. Over the years, we had so many special reunions with Laura Wall's family. These experiences are more than tradition. The cabin is a place to make memories with extended family as it creates an unspoken bond. We were to take six kids and two dogs up off the mountain. Whose idea was that? To climb I the said it was hers, and she said it was mine. <laughs> I'm scared to do it as an adult, and you guys were like, yeah, yeah, let's take With six kids and six a dog. Six kids and two dogs. We had Snowball, and they had their dog. I don't know what. And we made it to the top. Yep, and we figured we would. And how did the most famous call sign tradition begin? When Doug was in the military, Laura would come spend all summer with the boys in the upstairs, 45 men yeah. late. And they had chores to do, and you had chores to do. And when they were finished with theirs, then, or I was finished with my children, then that because we're, I'm, she's at 45 Lindley and I'm where I am. So we go, woo, woo, woo. And then you'd, pretty soon you'd hear her. And then we knew, okay, that means, I don't know why we didn't use the phone. And as the <laughs> snowy winter season <laughs> approached, the gear we packed for winter was much bulkier than the summer. In place of flip-flops and sunscreen, we tossed in snow boots and lip balm. Instead of tank tops and water skis, we grabbed earmuffs and plastic sleds rather than life jackets and margaritas. We brought along down jackets and hot chocolate mix. As we maneuvered our snowmobiles along the west side cabin's powder covered road, we were always struck by the breathless silence in the air. Pine needles didn't crunch beneath our tires children didn't splash in the lake water boat motors didn't roar in the distance dogs didn't bark down on the docks well not always true everything was beautifully still we stood in awe at the edge of the frozen lake mesmerized by the cabin's soft fluffy landscape We used to come up every single winter when we were raising our children. Uh -huh. We had three snowmobiles and we were up here every winter with the icicles. We have pictures yeah. of the icicles hanging clear down, you know, get the roaring fires going. and take Winter out. has always been a fun time for family gatherings at our cabin, especially during the Christmas holiday. that was published in the Medford Mail Tribune recounting her experience witnessing the fierce ice breaking up on the lake at the end of a long winter season. Friends had told us how the ice boomed and cracked, but we were quite unprepared. 
for the treat we experienced. It was nothing we had ever heard before. Sometimes the ice would snap like a shot. Then it would make a swishing sound on a grand scale, would end in a loud staccato crack. It would moan and groan, and in a rising and falling of the pitch, suddenly give out with a terrifying roar. As the sun slid down behind the mountain and the surfaces of the ice changed temperature, the moans and roars increased until there was a wall of sound rising around us. The booms from some of the louder reports were bounced back and forth from mountain to mountain in a series of echoes and re-echoes as thunder does during a summer lightning storm. See, I like to lie in bed and watch, and when I'd have my sleeping bag up as high as it would go. In the wintertime? Oh, yes. Yes. Watch the snow come down? Mm-hmm. Because you're all cuddly. It's just so peaceful and calm. And quiet. You haven't had the bad day up at the lake. Ka and Kappa said the cabin was their gift to future generations of our family, but we knew that it was more than that. There is nothing more comforting than a sentimental journey. Somehow, it evokes a feeling of gratitude for the many blessings in our lives. Think of the number of people that have been Oh, impacted by coming up here and being able to to share in this experience. It's such a beautiful legacy and gift that Gong Gapa left. Well, like family. I was saying, I think it has a lot to do with the clo- closeness of our family. Absolutely. Being together so often. The cabin is the glue that keeps family together. Children grow up, adults grow old, people wither, structures weather, landscapes evolve, as do families. We all know these universal truths, and yet, life, in pictures, tends to remind us of the fleeting nature of our time spent with family and friends making us appreciate moments like this even more. But one thing definitely hasn't changed. It still feels like home every time we walk through that cabin door. A lot of memories. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But in going through my list, one of my tops was Little Sirecco. Yeah, that's Uh, beautiful. uh, Because that's a really unique I don't know where it came from. I have no history of it other than it was just always done. The entire Houston family fully appreciates the magic that is Lake of the Woods. As it came time to leave the lakeside paradise each weekend, Gaw would say, Soak this up, girls. We have to go back to the rat race. (laughs) Well said. Soak it up, girls. We're going back to the rat race. And then the other uh-huh. thing she said, being at the cabin restoreth my soul. Descendants of the Houston family and countless dear friends have soaked up the experiences and memories of cabin N4 for over 80 years now. Our Lake of the Woods cabin. I do it loud. Oh, do it loud. Oh. Let's do it loud. Oh, 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 oh. There you go. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh.
nice little fellow. I know by your voice, but you're always so far away. In 1951, Gaw wrote this for their annual Houston family Christmas letter. Our family spent many busy weekends at Lake of the Woods with a new Old Town canoe. One excursion took us up a little stream at the end of the lake where we saw seven deer feeding and we could see a muskrat swimming to her house with a mouthful of reeds. The experience of gliding through the water in a canoe is a real thrill. And this one is from their 1954 Christmas letter. Margaret and Laura spent the summer at home, or we should say, between home and the cabin at Lake of the Woods. The main attraction at the lake this year was a new little boat with a windshield, steering wheel, and a speedometer which registered 25 most of the time. That is pretty fast when you are sitting that close to the water. The girls, including Darwin, became a familiar sight at any hour of the day, urging the boat on and roaring from one end of the lake to the other. One of our biggest thrills was being taken water skiing behind our neighbor's larger and faster boat. The very first time she tried, Darlin actually took off and traveled a good mile before she spilled. Was she ever proud? As we collect our thoughts and recount our blessings of the past year, we are struck with the realization that we are still here, living, loving, and being loved as we were last holiday season. Despite the threat of communism and world upheaval, despite the weather and the state of the stock market, we are still ourselves. Isn't it a comforting thought that another completely unused year is stretched out ahead of us? We look around at our friends and our homes and know that life has been very kind to us indeed. And we have the faith that the coming year will bring us all a full measure of happiness and prosperity.